If you want to grab your viewers attention and suck them right into your photograph, the fastest and easiest way to do that is with a vignette. We learn this usually in the very early stages of our photo post production endeavors. And we usually learn that with something like Adobe camera Raw or Lightroom. It's a very simple and easy thing to do in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, but the traditional method of adding a vignette is flawed in my personal opinion. I like Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom for their ability to add a vignette very simply and very easily, uh, but there's a couple of problems. Number one, uh, it adds just like a ring around our image. Uh, number two, it doesn't really give us a whole lot of control over everything that's happening there. And the third problem I find is that it's very evident that you've used a vignette in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom, typically when you're doing your vignetting there. So how do we make a better vignette? Well, I think the secret sauce to a beautiful and perfect vignette is in Photoshop. But the problem is there's no vignette button in Photoshop. Look around. There's no vignette button. There's no vignette filter. There's no vignette adjustment layer. There is nothing in Photoshop that says, Hey, I'm a vignette. Use me instead of Adobe camera Raw and Lightroom. But that's okay because I've developed a formula for you. It's a plus B plus C equals perfect vignette. <laughs> okay. So if you don't like math, that means the gradient adjustment layer plus the soft light blend mode plus blend if equals the perfect gradient three techniques in Photoshop that are going to come together to make a phenomenal vignette that has so much control. You're going to absolutely love it. So let's jump in here. This is our traditional vignette that I'm talking about from Adobe camera or Lightroom. What I want you to do is pay attention to what it's doing to the image. It's just laying a circular kind of look around the photograph, very similar to what a lens vignette would do. Uh, but here is our gradient vignette that we're going to use that is going to add contrast to the sides while protecting those highlights and give us the control that we might want to change the color of this vignette to draw the viewer's attention more into the areas that we want them to without flattening out the image. The traditional vignette feels pretty flat. This one looks pretty good. Here's the before. So let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and delete this and we'll get started. The first thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that our colors here are defaulted to uh, black and white. So I'm going to press D to default my colors to black and white. Now, if you didn't do this step, you can always fix this gradient color here and I'll show you how to do that in a second, but we're going to default that to black and white. And then I'm going to press the gradient button here. Now, I, the last gradient that I used was a black to transparent gradient. It's one of my most used gradients in Photoshop. So that's what it defaulted to in here. If yours did not go from black to transparency, maybe it's set to black and white right now. We need to set that to black to transparency. So to do that, just click right here. Now you're going to see all of my gradients are out and in the open. A lot of people ask me, Blake, how did you do that? Well, I took all the gradients that Adobe gives us and I pulled them all out of their folders. But if you're looking for this black to transparent gradient, you're going to find it in your basics gradient folder right here. This is the black to transparency. If you want to move these out, what I did was I basically moved every gradient out of here and I don't like them in the folders. If you want to move them out, all you have to do, you can click on one, press and hold shift and do that in every folder and just drag them and drop them out of there. Okay. And then you can delete those folders as you need be. Or if you like them in the folder structure, go right ahead. I don't, but we're going to change that to the black to transparency gradient. Now this gradient is a very good gradient to use for this because it's giving us already that vignette style of look. We're going to press OK. Now what I want to do here is I don't want this to be a linear gradient that goes from the bottom to the top of the image. I would rather this be a radial gradient. Now the radial gradient now is like just blasting on top of our face. But if we reverse that, it's going to go from transparency to black. So that gives us this vignette look. Now the scale is going to give us the ability to push and pull how big it's going to be on the left and right hand sides, top and bottom of this image. So as I bring this scale up, you're going to see that it gets bigger. Usually somewhere between 200 and 225 is a, is a good scale for this. Now you notice that this is percentages and not pixels. The great thing about this being percentage based and not pixel based is that no matter what size the image is, it's going to give you a roughly the exact same style of gradient, whether whether it's a postcard or a billboard because it's based on the percentage of the image and not the pixels within the image. I wish more things in Photoshop were actually percentage based hint hint. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to increase this a little bit more to about 215. Now we're going to get a little bit more advanced with this. Okay. So we've got our scale. We've got our radial gradient. We've already set our gradient from black to transparency. We don't have the key thing happening yet, which, which is going to be item B in our equation, which is the soft light blend mode. But one thing I want to talk about here is going to be the gradient itself. So let's edit this gradient. Now looking at this gradient, we can change how 
much of a compression we get or a transition that we get from that black to transparency. Right now it's a big fade. It's happening at, at the side and just slowly fade and very slowly fading out. We wanna compress that a little bit more. So to do that, we'll click on this stop right here. And as we move this over, you'll see that that black transition starts to compress a little bit more. And this gives us a lot of control over what's gonna happen and where this vignette's gonna be. So I'm gonna move this over until I don't have as much of it on her face about like that. Now, this combined with scale is going to give us the transition of that gradient. It's extremely powerful stuff here. So, so to get out of this, press OK and then press OK. So we've got the A part of our equation, which was the gradient. The B part of our equation is going to be the soft light blend mode. OK, now the soft light blend mode is great because if things are 50 percent gray, they drop out. And as it transitions into black, it's going to make things darker. And as it transitions into white, it's going to make things brighter. But as you'll notice here with this gradient, it's a black to transparent gradient. So there's no white in that variable. So we're not getting any added contrast to her or her face. We're just getting that black contrast on the outside border. So we can already see how this is coming together really well. Now, one of the things that I wanted you to see here was up here in these corners. These are our highlights. Now, if we look at our traditional vignette that we get from Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, look at how it takes those highlights and it kind of makes it look like tone compression because it's just adding a black veil over top of those highlights. Even with highlight control in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom, you're still going to get an element of this. We don't want that. We want those highlights to kind of shine through because we don't want to get tone compression in our highlight areas. And that's where we're going to get item C, which is blend if. So we'll double click on this gradient fill. And then we're going to bring our blend if layer styles over here. So we can just put it right over our face because we're not concerned about our face right now. We're concerned about these highlights out here. So if we want to protect those highlights, the underlying highlights of all the underlying layers underneath this from getting this vignette, we would go to underlying layer and we're going to protect the highlights. So if we pull this one to the right hand side, that's actually going to protect our shadows. We don't necessarily want that. I'm going to protect our highlights. So we're going to grab this one over here and we're going to move it over to the left. And as you see that, you'll see that up here in that corner, you'll see that we're getting this kind of this really weird kind of jagged edge there. Don't worry about that. Press alt or option and that'll allow us to split this and feather it over so we get a nice smooth transition. We can even block out and say, you know, we don't want this to be anywhere near anything that would be pure white. And then we'll slowly transition that out. That's going to give us a really good protection measure over those highlight areas to make sure that they don't get hit with this vignette like everything else does. So again, here's our traditional vignette versus the vignette in Photoshop that we custom built. Now, the beauty of this vignette is how you can modify it Click on this gradient fill. We can change the color of that vignette. We can still change the scale of it. We can do whatever we want with this. We can even at this point, which I didn't show you this yet on purpose, is that if we're in this gradient fill dialogue with the radial gradient, we can actually move this around. This is something that you can't do in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. You can't move a vignette in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. It just goes from the outside edges and wraps around. So we can move this and dial it exactly where we want it to be. So remember the scale at 215. Let's change that to one. OK, so you see this little teeny tiny little dot here. We can get exactly where we want this vignette to start by getting that scale to one. I'm going to put it right here in the middle of her of her eyes right there and then get that scale to move back up. We'll just do it nice and slow. See, boom, 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 boom. All those protections are still in place. And man, that is a beautiful <laughs> vignette. Perfect vignette. Now, the other cool thing about this is you can change the color. So if we click on the gradient here and let's say you like uh, the greens that are happening in this image and you want to accentuate those greens with your vignette, you can click on this color and change the color here using the color picker to an exact color green, maybe a dark color green that's in this photograph. Maybe make it a little bit darker here, like going over here. And what that does is it allows that vignette to be a green vignette. But let's say that green now becomes too powerful. How do we subdue or tone down the color green? Well, we do that with the color magenta. So if we come up to the color magenta, we can make a magenta vignette around there, which look, that makes this little whitish foliage stuff up here at the tops of those grass look beautiful. And while that traditional vignette does grab our attention and pull us into the subject, it doesn't do the best job because it just feels like a blanket layer on there that's kind of washed out and flattens out the image. Whereas this adds that beautiful contrast to the outside edges while adding that color to it. And that is just gorgeous. Now, if you're watching this, you're saying, man, it's great. Thanks for showing me how to do this in Photoshop. Like, I really wish I could do this in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. Well, I've got the video tutorial just for you. In this video right here, I'm going to show you exactly how I use this same concept to break the mold of the traditional vignette at the raw level. And you can produce some pretty awesome vignettes even in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom.